It is time now for Morning Rounds, our look at the top medical news of the week. Joining us are CBS News Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. John LaPook and CBS News contributor Dr. Holly Phillips. First up this week, the Food and Drug Administration announced what will be a major change in our food supply. Beef, pork and poultry farmers will have to phase out using antibiotics in the animals they raise. John? Vanita, the goal is to reduce the development of new drug-resistant bacteria that have become a major public health threat. For decades, farmers have added antibiotics to animal feed to stimulate growth in poultry, cattle, and pigs. But the antibiotics have been overused, and bacteria in the animals have become resistant to the drugs. Eventually, these resistant bacteria have come into contact with humans. The FDA's mandate would eliminate over-the-counter use of antibiotics for the main purpose of boosting growth in healthy animals. Antibiotics could only be used to treat or prevent disease and must be prescribed by a veterinarian. One consumer advocacy group estimates 80% of all antibiotics in this country are used in farm animals. Dr. William Schaffner is an infectious disease specialist with Vanderbilt University. The fewer antibiotics we use in, uh, in our animal food, the better it is for us. Because we infectious disease doctors are having a harder and harder time treating patients with important infections. I mean, he brings up the question everyone wonders about, but how many people are actually affected by these resistant infections, John? Vanita, it is a huge number. More than 2 million Americans have antibiotic-resistant infections every year, and 23,000 die. So how are these regulations going to be enforced, John? I've spoken to the FDA about this. They say it's going to start off voluntary, and the reason for that is it's just quicker. They can get it going more quickly. But they're going to take another look in three years, and depending upon how many people are on board, they may have to reassess. In your piece there, you were talking about how farmers have for years said this is to fatten animals, this is to keep them healthy in close proximity. How are they responding to this news? They seem to be on board. The major pork trade association said they're on board. And two of the biggest suppliers of the antibiotics that go into the feed say they're on board. So we'll see. We'll have to see what happens. Also this week, the city that banned trans fats, required calorie counts on menus, and tried to limit the size of soft drinks has made headlines again. New York's Board of Health voted on Wednesday to make flu shots mandatory for all children under the age of five in public schools and daycare facilities. Holly, uh, tell us about these new regulations. Well, really, this is the Department of Health responding to just incredible numbers. 40% of children in New York City between the age of six months and five years old get the flu every season, especially if they're in these, this setting, nursery school, daycare. Uh, and four kids died last year in New York City. So they're, they're really reeling from these numbers. The, the push is to get more people vaccinated and to recognize that also kids are the first vector of flu in the community. They tend to get it earlier and they get it in large numbers and pass it to the rest of the population. So you can really cut down just by targeting those kids. As a mom, I feel like I'm divided on this. I mean, I obviously see the benefits, but I also feel like, shouldn't this be the choice of the parent? Sure. Well, I mean, vaccines are, of course, a sensitive topic, uh, but it's not the first vaccine that is required. You know, certainly we are required to give our kids measles, mumps, tetanus, and other things. This is one that can make a really big difference in just a short amount of time. Uh, we will be required to give it every year. Uh, but the other thing is to really point out that the flu is not like the common cold. Right. There's this misconception that you just get sick for a while and you get better. It can really cause huge complications in kids. Uh, high fevers, seizures, secondary pneumonias. It's not something to be taken lightly. So the shot should really protect our kids. In London this week, health officials from the G8 countries held a summit on the growing threat of Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia. British Prime Minister David Cameron promised to double his nation's commitment to research funding over the next decade, and he called on other developed countries to work together and attack the global epidemic. A new case every four seconds, a global cost of $600 billion a year, and that is to say nothing of the human cost. Because it doesn't matter whether you're in London or Los Angeles, in rural India or in urban Japan, this disease steals lives, it wrecks families, it breaks hearts. And that is why all of us here are so utterly determined to beat it. Worldwide, 44 million people currently suffer from dementia, and that number is expected to more than triple to 135 million by the year 2050. 
A new study in the Journal of the American Medical Association shows an alarming connection between long-term use of antacids and vitamin B12 deficiency. Researchers in California examined medical records of more than 200,000 patients. They discovered that people who take antacids regularly for more than two years are at a higher risk of low levels of vitamin B12. John, explain the risks of antacids here. Well, this is a classic example of the struggle that doctors have on the one hand better living through chemistry, yeah. and on the other hand, don't mess with Mother Nature. You need stomach acid to do a lot of things, to digest your food, right. even for immunity, could, it kills bacteria that are in your body. So on the one hand, it's great, people have chronic heartburn, and these medications can really change their lives. On the other hand, as you start to lower the stomach acid, there can be side effects. You can have malabsorption, poor digestion of things like calcium and iron and magnesium, and even increase in certain infections. I'm a gastroenterologist, there's a certain bug called C. difficile. It can cause life-threatening colitis, and there's evidence that people who take long-term antacids have it a higher risk of that. So Holly, what's the takeaway then if you're taking them? Should you be taking them? You know, if you are on the antacids, don't stop. They are a very important treatment and they can prevent further disease. But it, the, these effects are dose related. So if you can take a lower dose, that's something to check with your doctor about. And also, you know, it, you can have a simple blood test to see if you are B12 deficient and if this even applies to you. Finally this week, if your holiday plans involve a trip to the museum, you may want to think twice before you pull out your cell phone to take pictures. New research from Fairfield University shows that people who snap digital photos of objects in museums in order to remember what they've seen actually end up doing just the opposite. Isn't that funny? Yeah, I felt that this way actually at my, at my daughter's birthday party last week and I thought if I stop to take photos, I'm no longer experiencing the moment. So yeah, is it worth it? You're not in the moment. You're actually out of it or behind a camera. I yeah. also, with all these thousands of pictures, that we have on our iPhones and yep. other devices. I miss the moments where you're sitting on the couch with the book in front of you and you're just going over them, you're turning the pages. We don't do that anymore. I have the hundreds of thousands of pictures that I rarely look at. Yeah. It's a digital crutch. Dr. John LaPouf, <laughs> Dr. Holly Phillips, thank you both.